Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. So with this very rapid development of the mRNA COVID vaccines, analytical tools also had to be quickly developed for characterization of critical quality attributes of mRNAs throughout this development and production process. A key factor in, in mitigating these risks is, is implementation of effective analytical tools that can properly measure the mRNA critical quality attributes. But beyond this, thorough testing and regulatory compliance are also very critical in ensuring that mRNA-based vaccines are both safe and efficacious. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, can mRNA integrity and five prime capping efficiency be assessed using a single assay? As mRNA vaccine development continues to advance rapidly, there is a growing need for robust methods to characterize mRNA constructs and drug products efficiently. This includes how rapidly measuring intact, capped, and tailed mRNA in a single step can provide critical insights into mRNA integrity. In this X Talk Spotlight edition, I spoke with Dr. Randy Lacey, field applications scientist at Endeavor, to learn about innovative approaches to mRNA analysis and quality control in mRNA vaccine development. Dr. Lacey spoke about the importance of fit for purpose and in process mRNA testing across all stages of vaccine development and manufacturing, highlighting how these approaches can help address key challenges in mRNA vaccine characterization. Randy, thank you so much for taking the time in this Spotlight interview. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm uh, really excited to talk today. So to start us off, how do you approach assessing mRNA integrity and five prime capping efficiency in vaccine development? And why are these attributes so critical to evaluate? I think it's important to, to start by answering the second part of the question first regarding why five prime capping efficiency and integrity are such important attributes or characteristics to evaluate during mRNA vaccine development. So both five prime capping efficiency and integrity are very critical to the overall efficacy of an mRNA vaccine. Um, the five prime cap specifically plays a key role in mRNA stability by preventing degradation. And it's also important in regulating translation of the mRNA into the actual target antigen. mRNA integrity, on the other hand, which can commonly be defined as a measure of the amount of full length intact mRNA, is similarly critical in that it provides information on the purity of the mRNA or essentially how much of the mRNA has um, been fragmented or degraded. And so it's important to understand that degraded or fragmented mRNA cannot be translated into the appropriate antigen, and therefore it cannot actually elicit an effective immune response. So how are actually five prime capping efficiency and integrity measured? So typically, um, multiple techniques are required to separately assess five prime capping efficiency and mRNA integrity. Five prime capping efficiency is generally measured using well-documented uh, mass spec-based approaches. So these approaches provide information on the amount of mRNA in solution that has a five prime cap, but they do not account for how much mRNA is also fully intact. And so separately, the amount of full length or intact mRNA is commonly measured by electrophoresis based approaches or HPLC. So both of these measurements, along with an assessment of the actual poly A tail, can collectively provide information about how much mRNA is fully intact and capped. So here at Endeavor, we've taken a different approach to assessing the amount of full length capped and intact mRNA with our five prime capped QSA. So the 5 prime cap Q assay is an immunoassay based approach that utilizes an immobilized 5 prime cap specific antibody that functions to capture the mRNA that has a 5 prime cap. The mRNA is then labeled with a fluorescent probe that is specific for the poly A tail. And so with this assay orientation, so we're capturing via the cap and then labeling via the tail, only mRNA that has both a 5 prime cap and a poly A tail are detected. So when used alongside a well, a very well characterized reference standard, the five prime cap Q assay can provide a quantitative assessment of the amount of mRNA that has both a five prime cap and a poly A tail in a single measurement. 
So this is very important because mRNA that contains both a five prime cap and a poly eight tail is the actual immunogenically relevant form of the mRNA, which otherwise cannot be measured using a single assay. And what are the main challenges in mRNA vaccine characterization? To answer this, um, I'll start by just providing a bit of context as to where we currently are with regards to the analytical tools that are used in mRNA vaccine development. So in, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously very rapid development of vaccines was needed and mRNA-based vaccines were and still are very appealing due to the relative ease of manufacturing and scalability compared to uh, traditional vaccines. So with this very rapid development of the mRNA COVID vaccines, analytical tools also had to be quickly developed for characterization of critical quality attributes of mRNAs throughout this development and production process. So this led to you know, very rapid implementation of a variety of existing and well-established technologies like PCR and sequencing-based tools, mass spectrometry, uh, chromatographic approaches, um, and electrophoresis-based approaches. And so all of these different tools were used to very quickly fill in the analytical gaps. So these analytical tools and techniques are and can be very effective, but some of them present very specific challenges and bottlenecks in the mRNA vaccine manufacturing process. So some of these challenges include things like poor time to result, very low ease of use, expensive and complex instrumentation that requires lots of upkeep, and similarly complex sample prep and data analysis, and, and very importantly, inconsistent and uh, poor performance. So just to provide a, a couple examples, from a time to result and, and ease of use perspective, mass spec based approaches for assessing five prime capping efficiency and poly eight tailing can provide very highly precise and accurate results, but they can also require very complex data analysis and a high degree of specialized expertise, which oftentimes can lead to you know, extended wait times of multiple weeks for actually generating the data. Another example of, of methods that may struggle in terms of reliability and consistency are the immunoblots and ELISAs that are commonly used for measuring things like double-stranded RNA impurities. So these methods um, can be you know, oftentimes inconsistent, and also importantly, they're lacking in the sensitivity required to detect these you know, low threshold levels of double-stranded RNA in the final drug product. So those are just a couple specific examples of challenges. But lastly, I, I want to mention a more sort of general challenge in mRNA vaccine characterization which is a lack of standardization of analytical techniques. So as I mentioned, currently there are a pretty wide variety of different analytical tools and techniques that are implemented throughout the vaccine, the mRNA vaccine development and production process. And many of these tools and techniques require a high degree of specialized knowledge and training. Where this sort of standardization challenge can be overcome is in is in basically in development and impl implementation of more versatile analytical approaches that can provide quick and easy answers to not just individual critical quality attributes, but multiple critical quality attributes, which overall will help to reduce this um, analytical burden during the development and manufacturing process. Now, you touched on this a bit, but could you tell us more about the potential risks if mRNA quality isn't properly assessed? And how can those risks be mitigated during production? Of course, you know, when regulators are, are assessing a, a vaccine for licensure, they have to assess the quality of the mRNA in the vaccine prior to public release, which provides, you know, which provides very critical information on both the safety and effectiveness of the mRNA-based drug. So if, if the mRNA quality isn't properly assessed, there, of course, are a variety of different risks that, that can arise. One example is, in general, the poor efficacy of the vaccine in terms of actually eliciting the appropriate immune response. So an example that I, I mentioned, I touched on earlier, is if you have mRNA that is highly fragmented and this you know, high degree of fragmentation isn't caught in the production process prior to release, the mRNA cannot express the appropriate antigenic protein after injection, and subsequently the neutralizing antibodies that are so critical cannot be produced. Another um, example of a risk is um, in actually delivery of impurities in the drug, so things like double-stranded RNA. 
And so double strand RNA is an impurity that can cause unwanted immunogenicity. And so it's, it's obviously very critical in demonstrating that there is little to no remaining double strand RNA in the final product um, before release. So of course, a, a, you know, a key factor in, in mitigating these risks is, is implementation of effective analytical tools that can properly measure the mRNA critical quality attributes. But beyond this, thorough testing and regulatory compliance are also very critical in ensuring that mRNA-based vaccines are both safe and efficacious. And to wrap up, how can the evolving landscape of mRNA vaccine research benefit from improved characterization methods? And what specific innovations do you foresee improving the field? From my perspective, I see two key areas in mRNA vaccine development where major improvements can be made from an analytical standpoint. So the first is in, as I mentioned before, in speed and ease of use of analytical tools. And then the second is in the capacity for multiplexed analysis. So first, in, in thinking about the speed and ease of use, I mean, to put this simply, the, the faster you can generate analytical data on critical quality attributes of mRNA vaccines, the faster a vaccine can reach the public. So if there are delays at each of these manufacturing steps to understand attributes such as 5' capping efficiency, integrity, and purity, this will ultimately lead to delays in release of drug products. So how can we actually innovate in terms of, specifically in terms of speed and, and ease of use? One way is to implement assays that can generate quicker answers that are high throughput and are also easy to use, which these, these specific attributes of an analytical tool can be particularly useful in uh, early stage development when, as an example, when IVT conditions are being optimized and many samples are being generated. So I mentioned, you know, we've heard from many mRNA vaccine developers that oftentimes there are long waits of, of up to weeks for mass spec data on 5 prime capping efficiency. And this obviously can present a very significant bottleneck when you simply want to understand how a variety of changes in IVT conditions have impacted 5 prime capping efficiency. So an assay um, like Endeavor's 5 prime cap q assay can provide answers as to how much intact and capped mRNAs in solution in under two hours, which, which can provide a pretty huge advantage when you're in the early stages of development. And, you know, ultimately, mass spec based approaches may be used for release testing of, of five prime capping efficiency, but less time consuming and laborious techniques like the five prime cap Q assay can very greatly speed up other stages of the development and, and production process. So I mentioned also um, multiplexing as a as an area where um, you know innovation can be made. So, you know, from a multiplexing standpoint, you know, many different mRNA vaccines are increasing in the number of the unique constructs that are actually present in the drug itself. So this presents a very tricky and, and unique challenge in terms of confirming the identity of the mRNA itself and separately confirming the um, express protein when performing things like you know, in vitro protein expression assays. So similarly, technologies like Endeavor's Vaxeroid platform offer a very high degree of multiplexing where you can generate simultaneous answers for many different unique constructs when measuring the mRNA itself and separately when measuring the actual protein that the mRNA is expressing. So there are Obviously, you know, many different areas where analytical innovation can be hugely advantageous, but speed of testing and multiplexing, both of which you know, go hand in hand, are key areas where we feel positive impacts can be made in the uh, mRNA vaccine production and development process. Well, thank you very much, Randy, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Yeah, and thank you to you as well. I, I appreciate uh, getting to chat with you today. We look forward to learning more about Endeavor's initiatives in mRNA vaccine characterization. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion.